All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today. Nothing is into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. We hope that you enjoy. Enjoy. enjoy, enjoy. Welcome to episode 348 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. We're not doing an album battle this week, promise. No, this this week, Daniel's come up with an awesome topic. So welcome back, Daniel. Thank you. Marcus Almighty Mark. Greetings. And 69th Blizzard Ken, who's been waiting hey. all week to tell us the error of our ways. <laughs> no. So, Daniel, the, the topic that you came up with for us is a really yeah. cool idea of putting the guitarists head to head against one another to try and determine once and for all who is the greatest KISS guitarist and why, to put some numbers behind those facts. Now, you originally started out by going with the guitarist Strongest Era, and, you know, a couple of us backs asked you in our little discussion about it, saying, well, why does it have to be one era? Why can't it be the whole, you know? So I, I think everyone kind of ended up just breaking it down to how they wanted to, you know, whether it was to pick a guitarist performance from a year or an album. But, you know, tell us about the topic. And some of the metrics well, that you decided to have as uh, rank. Yeah, it was just an idea I got from playing a lot of NHL hockey. You know, I was a big fan of the EA Sports Series, starting back in '94, playing those oh. games, and uh, all the players were ranked uh, according to different skills like discipline, uh, deking, passing, puck control. You know, all those kinds of skills. Yes. Speed, exactly. If you wanted like a big, strong guy, you got Eric Lindros. You know, he were great, was great at, yeah. at body checking and, and very aggressive. But maybe lacked in other areas. Yeah. And if you wanted a speedster, you picked Pavel Bure. He was real quick, had a lot of speed, but wasn't that good Fighting at the skills body were checking. garbage. Yeah. <laughs> so... So, so they were good at different things. So, so I thought maybe you could uh, apply these uh, skills on the guitarists of Kiss because it's an endless discussion. Who's the best? Who, who do you, who's your favorite? And so on. So I tried to put together some skills that would reflect the strong sides and the weak sides of every guitarist that's uh, ever played in Kiss. So I ended up with a few skills like... Um, you know, star power and, well, maybe Julian will go through the the different skill sets as we go along with the discussion. But I thought it was kind of a fun thing. I always like numbers and ranking stuff. So yeah. uh, I, I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, and I ended up with a result that I was surprised by myself. It was, I, 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 I almost fixed the numbers at the end in order to get it the way I wanted, but, but I, I managed <laughs> to stay away from that. And I, I, I just let the result uh, be as it as it was yeah so before we get into the nitty-gritty of all of these there's three groupings of um of rankings that we're going to basically be talking about uh, you know the first one's personality the second one is making music and then the third is live skills and these are all broken down into, into little sub um categories that we actually yeah. rank them by but ken did you surprise yourself or did any of us surprise our you in particular or disappoint you and then we'll we'll uh, break it down once we get everyone's <laughs> overall opinions of how this went because as daniel just said he had to you know uh, he made him second guess himself in essence at the end um well after i did my uh, ranking um i saw a couple of ties uh in my <laughs> the ties out of five there's two guitars tied and then the two other uh, guitarists tied and then there was one another guitarist a little you know much lower than the the other two um and so that was kind of surprising the ties but i felt that those eras of especially the 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 two that tied for the you know, like number one place uh were you know well represented in their own eras um and 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 really contributed and did a great job so I said, okay, well, okay, you know, I thought, well, maybe I, I want this other guy to be a little bit higher, but I didn't, I didn't 
I didn't mess with you know what this is the way I, I just went down the list gave numbers totaled them and you know it is it is what it is the thing that uh i was just kind of surprised by you know mark a bit on some, on some of his scores <laughs> um and i also think you know what there's something missing from this as a as a uh you know a category and one of them i thought should be uh memorable solos uh is missing from here uh, that's just we something. can add it yeah it we can right add it with tip the scales but, i'm not know, adding anything just, into this freaking just, spreadsheet just, it's evil enough already right. <laughs> just say all right mark what about you did uh you surprise yourself or did uh when everything came out at the end were you completely unsurprised I, actually my results were exactly what i thought they would be based on how i kind of see the guitar players i mean originally when i saw that they were being focused on in certain periods. I thought that wasn't the best way really to do it. But really what I did, I didn't really specifically think of a time period. What I just did was I said to myself, okay, Bruce Kulik, what's the first thing that comes to mind when I see the following categories? So obviously, you know, your mind will automatically skip to a period of time when you think of him, when you ask yourself these questions, just like when I ask myself about Vinny or I ask myself about, you know, Mark St. John, or if I ask myself about Ace, my, my mind will immediately go to a certain time period, maybe the ones that I've watched the most, you know, live bootlegs from of Ace or something, you know, and then I'll base everything on that rather than to say, well, how did I think he was in like 75? You know what I mean? So I kind of did an overall assessment of him. Yeah, the only problem is Ace was so different in the 90s. So not so, really. But I guess, well, I think it was. He was still unreliable and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bad stuff was was there, but but you know the writing skills and uh, he didn't write any songs uh, beside Into the Void and his solo stuff. So uh, that's the only thing. The other guys are pretty much the same. You know, Bruce evolved during the years, Tommy evolved as well, but Vinny was there for such a short, such such a brief time, and Mark mm. as well. So so I, I guess you, you you go with a general impression that you get when you think of them. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Like your first thought of when you think of them. Yeah. And let's approach it that way. We're basically short, concise, first thought on each one of these, because we've got a lot to go through uh, when talking about the five guitars. Let, let's start with likability. And um, Daniel, get us started on likability. And, you know, if you want to go through all of the guitarists and tell us who is the most likable or just give us your rankings on those, uh, then we'll move on to the other guys. Yeah, I actually had three, three guys that ranked high. Tommy, Bruce, and actually Ace. Uh, Br Bruce and Tommy are, are such team players. I mean, they're always good guys. I've never seen them, you know, saying something that might upset anyone. Well, maybe Bruce at one convention was angry with Vinny. He had heard that he, he had said, that Vinny had said that he, he did the solo for Unholy, Unholy, but that's about the only time I've seen him a bit upset and using curse words. Uh, Ace, on the other hand, I mean, it's hard to not like him. Even with all his uh, flaws, uh, he's still such a fun guy. And, you know, you, we all have these friends with great flaws, but you still like them because they have some strength that makes you, I mean, you can't, well, you you, you, you might have a friend that is really selfish or something, but but you can look um, the other past way because it. he has, yeah, you can look past it because he has so other strength in strengths in other areas. And that goes for Ace. Vinny and uh, Mark ranked much lower. Yeah, Ken, what about likability for the guitarist for you? Yeah, I had uh, <clears throat> basically they're all around the same, but uh, the high ones was, was Bruce for me. Um, uh, it's just likable every time I see him and he's just so even, you know, level headed. Um, and just always, you know, seems like a good guy. A couple of times, you know, I, I met him, um, uh, just been, has been great, you know, great experience. So, uh, and, and, you know, Ace is just right behind Ace and, uh, Tommy are just right, right there with him, um, right behind. And then you have, uh, Vinny, you know, I don't know what to make of him sometimes, so he's, he's a little bit lower. And then Mark, I gave low cost. You know, we didn't. He wasn't there 
long enough to, to know, uh, you know, what kind of person he really was. Uh, so he, he just kind of falls by default at the bottom for me. Yeah. Mark, how about you? Well, um, when I did it, I kind of looked at it from the standpoint of not only what do the fans think of them, but I also kind of took it from the approach of what do the guys in KISS maybe think of, uh, what do the people within the business world or music world think of these people too? Because, I mean, it's it's one thing for us to say it, but we don't really know how these people are. Whether we want to believe that or not, we don't really know how these people are behind closed doors when it comes to business stuff and other stuff. We just see Ace cracking jokes and stuff like that and think he's a hoot. But, you know, if you work with the guy, people may not say he's a hoot at all. Right. So no. uh, I, I kind of based it on an overall approach like that. So, I mean, I didn't, you know, I didn't deck ace or anything. I still gave him a seven out of 10. But, you know, the people that were high were are the, are the ones that I think all of us put high. I put Bruce high. I put uh, Tommy Thayer pretty high. I even put uh, Mark St. John a six because I figured that he's one of those kind of like typical, you know, you know, kind of those, that, that kind of quiet guy that, you know, you could probably hang out with and, you know, you'd, you'd be a, an okay guy. He doesn't seem like irritable or anything like that. And I put Vinny the lowest because, quite frankly, uh, he just seems like one of those guys that would probably get under your skin after a while. I mean, a lot of the times when you, when you talk about Vinny Vincent to anybody, you get that eye roll effect happening, right? So I, I, he ranked the lowest for me. I think the problem with Mark St. John, I don't know if you read the interviews he did with um, Anders Tegner over K a few years after he left KISS. And Anders Tegner was at, 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 at his hotel room and he was snoring and he was, I think he even had some sort of questionable pornography in, in yes. there as well. I'm, uh, so oh, so, so that, 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 makes, that made him drop a bit on my list. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was in the band so such a short period that it was very hard to really give him a fair vote, you know. So everything yeah, yeah, like exactly. four four points to six is just middling to me. It's like yeah, whatever kind of votes, you know. Yeah. Uh, in likability, mine are both colored by my personal interactions with Bruce and Tommy. Ten out of ten, you know, they have, yeah. have always been great. I've never heard anything unfair, um, you know. I've heard of them having off days and being a bit brusque like any human being, but the vast majority of them are 10 out of 10 experience that I've heard of. So it simply is that simple. Um, Likeability for Ace, you know, I gave him eight because I've had great interactions with him. I've had less than great interactions with him. He's human, um, but he's never been as consistently awesome as Tommy and Bruce. So even though he's Ace, you know, he, he gets an eight. Uh, Mark, Again, four to six, middling, whatever. I, I don't, I, I can't really comment on him. I didn't have any direct interactions with him. Uh, Vinny gets a three, and that's colored strictly by recent years. Um, and, yeah. you know, while he, he was very gracious to me, his just overall interactions are very negative. And again, that is by his own design. It doesn't make him a bad person. It just means he doesn't appear very likable to me. Why don't we have Steve Ferris on the list? No, just <laughs> we could add a, quite a few. And yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. anything Bob gave, Kulik. if anything, Bob well, Kulik. since you say Bob, um, and that is why Vinny gets a three because of Bob, because I got shouted at for fifteen minutes because of Vinny by Bob at the oh. expo, and yeah. Bob was we're, we're, Bob we're, was so we're... angry and shouting at me about Vinny ripping him off five hundred dollars. <laughs> Yeah. Like, it's not my They're fault. Right, yeah. I know his picture's on the expo flyer, but it's not his expo. <laughs> I think and I'm this not... is a problem. Yeah, this is a problem with Vinny because I think if you look at 82, 83, uh, only 82, 83, he would get a much higher ratings. But after that, he's made just such a mess of everything he's been involved with from the conventions in the mid 90s to recent appearances. Well, actually, he did a few. It seems like the la last few he did was quite a success, but that was only for the real diehard fans. So he was surrounded by je yes guys, I guess, I guess. But other than that, he's made a mess out of everything he has been involved with. And that hurt his numbers, uh, especially on Julian's rankings, I think. Yes. So take a yes. three and stick it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. fan interaction, I, I think we should breeze through that one fast um, so mm -hmm. that we can focus Didn't more time on the more important ones, because otherwise we'll be here for eight hours and it'll be a three-parter. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Daniel, fan interaction. Same, same there. I mean, Bruce, Tom, and A scores high, and Ken. the rest a bit low. Yeah, for me, it's it's pretty much the same. I had Bruce at the top there on that one too. With, uh, um, well, yeah, actually, I didn't put Vinny too low. Tommy and Vinny are right behind them, and then Ace, and then of course Mark. I don't know. I don't know if we should even have had Mark on on this. Uh, list to we should have probably kept it to the four guitars. I, I asked you guys, I, I put him in parenthesis, but 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 it was included. Hey, it's Very okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it'll it'll you know, we'll talk more about him probably on a couple other things that are, yeah, there'll be there'll be some more positives that that are more valid. So disregard yeah. these ones which are clearly pretty invalid towards Mark because we're not trying to be deliberately unfair towards him. Yeah, uh, and, and our Mark, what's your thought on fan interaction? Well, it's, it's, it's the same thing for me, too. I mean, I had Bruce and Tommy very high, I had Ace at around a six, and uh, because I mean. Yeah, I mean, his interaction is fine, but I mean, he's always late to shit and stuff like that, so I wouldn't be very happy if I was a fan. Uh, and, you know, I also put Vinny and Mark the same at four, because, you know, Vinny, just of late, how he was, I don't think his interactions were that great. And Mark, we didn't get many interactions, so there you go. Yeah, I was completely unfair to Vinny. I gave him a three again, even though the times I've interacted with him, he's actually been extremely gracious to me. But again, I've colored my number by the overall impression of how he interacts with fans. Not that he was really gracious to me, held my hand, shaking it, looked me eye, you know, so thank you. You know, it was very wonderful. Could not fault him in the slightest on any of the, was it three or four occasions, um, but just how he's gone towards everyone um since bruce wins um ace is a six you know he's hit and miss on his fan interactions again he could be awesome and he could be really late so you never know what you're going to get let's move on into star power and i feel like i should use the phantom of the boy uh, phantom of the boy, star child um daniel <laughs> yeah uh ace of course i think he 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 scored highest on every list well i'm not sure i think but at least he got high numbers high ratings uh, from everyone uh, i gave him an eight i might have given him a nine as well because if you think back to the 70s the spaceman rocking the stage uh, no one knew who he was uh, hidden behind the makeup the mystery of course he had a lot of star power and it still stays with him a bit to this day uh, i would also give vinny quite a high score because i think uh, in 82 83 he was the only replacement who dared to act like a star and he paid the price for it ultimately. Ultimately, uh, so if, if if you watch him in interviews, he 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 talks a whole lot back in in eighty two eighty three, and if you watch him on stage, he kind of stands in the middle and and take dares to take up room on stage. On the other side of the spectrum, you have Bruce. I think he always lacked uh, star power. I mean, he's a fine guy. I mean, you would like him like your nice uncle that you could sit and talk with. But, but, but I don't see him like a star on stage, you know. He's always been the studio type of guy. So this is my biggest issue with Bruce. I, I, he seemed like, you know, the nice uncle on stage. Well, I can stand over here and play. Uh, I want to, I'm going to do a solo. Gene, what am I supposed to do? And then Gene, like, well, you run to this side of the stage, run up the stairs. And yeah, but that's the thing down you at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, but it still was with him, I think, quite a bit. And, and some of the moves he had on stage, I mean, when he pointed, he didn't reach out with a straight arm. It was kind of crooked. And he, <laughs> when he put his feet to the sides and tried to look cool, it kind of looked like, well, he's faking it. So... I, th that was always my big problem with Bruce, but other than that, he's just a great guy and, you know, great musician and everything, but I didn't feel it on stage. Well, mm -hmm. that's it for me. Yeah. Okay. So Vinny was oblivious to everyone else and he yep. thought he was the star. Ken? Yeah, for me, star power, uh, ace, you know, was the highest on mine also. Um, he, he is a star and a star man, right? <laughs> um, uh, and he, he was out there. He had his moves. He had his his 
you know, he created his own effects, you know, the smoke effects and, and that kind of stuff during the show. And uh, he was a big, you know, his guitars, car, guitars were very important to him at the time, you know, back then. And um, so, yeah, he was number one. And, and then, yeah, I kind of agree with Daniel to a degree uh, on Bruce. Yeah, he, he was kind of, you know, green when he first joined Kiss the first couple of years. But then he started, you know, feeling it, and you could see he he was becoming more of a uh, you know, better, you know, whatever you want to call it, out front there. Um, then Tommy, Tommy is was a little bit higher for me than Bruce. Um, and, yeah, Mark was a pretty... <laughs> it's the bottom. Yeah, Vinny was lower for me, um, too, because uh, I, I just don't... Uh, I mean, maybe because he wasn't there long enough. Um, yeah, he had star power, but the star power where he played too long of a solo and, you know, pissed off Paul because um, he wouldn't stop playing the solo. That's that's a different kind of star power. That's kind of a <laughs> that selfishness <laughs> thing yeah. going on there. But uh, so Ace was number one on that for me. Mark? Well, I mean, believe it or not, I did have Ace... Uh, uh, and, uh, and a, as well as Vinny, I had them uh, a sort of rate ranking mainly because of the fact that he did incorporate these kind of things like the, like the smoking guitar and stuff like that. Not to be controversial, but really Ace only had three stage moves. I mean, he only had like the tilting his guitar up, standing, and and you know. Other than that, the guy's hard big rock and roll star. He Paul Stanley running all over the place and stuff. He is pretty stationary for most of the time. He's so out of it half the time, right? So, I mean, Vinnie Vincent on that, and he had ace beat hands down because he was always running around more. He was on his knees. He was much more animated than ace ever was as a star in star power. I mean, like I said, I mean, I don't mean to be mean to ace, but really, he, he didn't have much star moves on the stage, that guy. He was just a good guitar player that had a great makeup and he had a smoking guitar and that's what made him popular. So that's how I kind of ranked him. But he's still the number one ranked one along with Vinny on this. Uh, Mark St. John, obviously you can't give him a high marking because he did. He only played like one show. How can you give him any kind of ranking based on that? You know, and you know, Tommy, I think he did well too. And Bruce, he's not the, you know, memorable front man, but when he got to around, you know, uh, hot in the shade and revenge and that you know he was going all over the stage back and forth playing yeah. he did some great, great solos and don't forget too not to be again controversial but a uh, ace's solos and bruce's guitar solos one is more complicated than the other to play especially live and he could still run around and do some of his stuff and get away with doing it so i kind of you know didn't give him a low mark as a like, you know star power but i didn't put him as high as ace i didn't want to get egged too badly yeah, but look at Ingvi Malmsteen. I mean, he plays a whole lot of different, a whole lot of technical things. So but he, he is a star. He'd be a show. ten. Yeah, but is it yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a ten. Yeah, no, Ingvi. no. I, I've only seen Ingvi once live, and I left halfway through the <laughs> show. Actually, I couldn't stand it. it, was, it was... You know what? And as part of star power, you got to think of. I also thought of you know influence because yeah, that's not on here. Exactly. It's, that's part of it. The power of it being is. His star power influenced a lot of guitarists. Okay, but I'll ask you something. Okay. Okay. How many guitar players, you know, back in Ace's time were around compared to how many guitar players were around when Bruce and these guys? I mean, the amount of guitar players that were out that time are quadrupled. I mean, Ace, yeah, there was good guitar players out then, but, I mean, there weren't as many doing as what he was doing, especially. So, of course, he had influence. If Ace came out in 1990... He wouldn't have no influence as much if the, the guitar players that came out in the 90s came out at the same time as him. Mm, maybe. Um, mm, I don't know. I think time period it's... has a lot to do with it when he came out. Yeah, but he was... Yeah. You, you, you lumped was Ace... was a pioneer. Ace in with, like, Ted Nugent as a guitar player. Um, Perry. Yeah. But, with, well, yes, uh, but I'm saying, again, Blackmore, his influence... I think his Hunky. influence had more to do with some of the stuff that he it's did, like, as far as the smoking guitar... Just, yeah. And stuff like yeah, that. But, like those things were the things that people remembered from. They yeah, didn't yeah. remember his some of his pentatonic licks. They remembered those no. things, right? We we will get to that later when we go yeah. to we shops. You know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where Jared? are we? 
Okay, yeah. uh, humor. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, blow through this one fast. Ace wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, actually, I think Tommy must have a pretty good sense of humor. He's been in the band 19 years at this point. <laughs> He's got to be the winner. Um, media interaction. Um, let's do this one quickly. Daniel. Well, well, I think they all do well. But once again, I have to say, I think Bruce uh, is uh, so afraid of saying anything controversial. So he plays it safe most of the time. In later years, he, he started to open up. But during the Kiss years, I, I think he always slacked a bit in, in, in interviews. He, he wasn't given a lot of, you know, time to speak either. But um, Ace always does well. I really enjoyed the one of the last uh, interviews he did. You know, those creatures clips uh, that that surfaced a year or two ago. He did real well, even though he had no clue of what they were playing on the record or anything. So for me, uh, I'd put Ace at the top. Maybe Vin as, as well, because I think he, he, he did well in the few interviews he did. Yeah, Ken. Back in the day. Yeah, media inter interaction... They're all around the same to me. Uh, they're only different by a point six seven on my list, uh, except for you know Mark was slightly lower again. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're all about the same for whatever reasons. Um, there's nothing that stands out where one is really better with the meter than than the others. Mark. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think you know all of them are about the same. I mean, I think that. Uh, you know, Ace, whenever he does interviews are, are fine. Same with, I think Bruce is okay, but with it, I mean, he, he doesn't seem to be a hard interview when it comes to stuff like that. Same with yeah. Tommy. Uh, you know, obviously Mark, we didn't have very much of him to see how he was with the press, but I, I gave, again, Vinny the lowest mark because based again on how his recent events, it's always just boils down to that, it seems with him. Yeah, I would actually rethink mine. I, I was pretty brutal with Vinny on this one. I gave him one just over, again, recent <laughs> recent years. But I think Daniel raised a very good point about how he took control, you know, in interviews back in the day and behaved like he was a founding member of the band and just talked as, whenever he want. I mean, he was uh, not quite Tom Snyder level um, for media interaction, which wins. But uh, he actually did come close. You know, Bruce, Mark wasn't there long enough. Uh, Bruce and Tommy are very much... Um, kind of party line guys. Uh, Tommy's starting to say a bit more and open up now as well, which is nice. So uh, very beneficial. Yeah. All right, here's a key one that we'll need to talk about: songwriting. <laughs> Daniel. At the top, I put uh, Vinny and Ace, and uh, we all know Vinny what he did in on Lick It Up and Creatures. Uh, so I actually gave him a ten, and I. Really like some of the songs he did with uh, Warrior and a few from his solo records as well. But then everything deteriorate, deteriorated. How the fuck you even say that difficult <laughs> word? Said it right. But you it got right. it. You nailed uh, it. Almost, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I put him out. And also, maybe a bit controversial, Ace, I gave him a 10 because we all know he's kind of lazy. Uh, he didn't write a whole lot of stuff for Kiss, but the ones he got on the records, I like them a lot. You know, Parasite, Cold Gin, Rocket Ride, Shock Me. So so I think when he uh, actually put in an effort, I think he wrote some great songs. And also his solos, of course, in the early days uh, were also really well mm, thought out. He put a lot of effort into them and they you can sing along to them to this day. And so so those two guys were at the top for me. So Ace went back to school and got graded on a curve. Ken. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would have given, well, I gave, I gave Vinny the highest score based on his, his songwriting with regarding Kiss uh, in the short period of time, of course, you know, uh, a little bit of did he did on creatures, but uh, lick it up most, for most of all, and of course revenge um, was just stellar stuff, um, and even his own stuff is was pretty good. It's just 
it was ruined by the production or and by the craziness of of <laughs> with the guitars and everything going on. Yeah. But they they were good songs. Um, so I gave them high scores in that. And basically, Ace and I gave Ace and, and Bruce about the same. And also uh, with Tommy, it's just a little bit lower because, you know, he's done a little bit, uh, a few things, but, uh, you know, not, not a lot there. So I, I think I should have given Ace a higher score because of some of the stuff he did, you know, solo especially the solo. I know uh, Daniel on his list put eight, you know, ace and 78 kind of thing. I mean, that's, that's just a stellar, great songwriting on that album. He was coming to his peak form right there. And he did a lot of great stuff earlier for, uh, for kiss, you know, on hotter than hell and, and so on parasite and, and, and go, you know, goes on. So, I should have given him a higher score, but I didn't tweak it. I didn't go back and tweak it, but I should have, I think, on that. Well, it's always good to reconsider. Mark? Yeah, so on this, uh, I also gave Vinny the highest. I gave him a nine. Uh, I think that his work on Creatures and Lick It Up were stellar. I went as far as to say that I think he pretty much saved those records as far as songwriting was concerned. Uh, So I gave him definitely the highest mark on that. Uh, I gave Bruce uh, one mark higher than Ace, and I know that's probably what Ken was probably going, what, when he he saw that? Well, Uh, two things, yeah. Well, that's, and and I'll explain myself on that, mainly because (laughs) I'm thinking about their career as a whole, and I'll be honest with you, Ace wrote some good songs with Kiss, that's true. He didn't write many of them, but they were good, but I'm not big on his solo career at all, like the songs that he did in his solo stuff. Quite frankly, I think I like BK3 stuff better and even Carnival of Soul stuff better that Bruce did. That's why I put him ahead of Ace on there. Because I I mean, I, I support Ace. I buy his solo albums, but last week, the last time I listened to Space Invader, I can't even remember. It probably has seven yeah. inches of dust on it since the last time I've listened to that album. So BK3 that, is such a great album. We should do something with that yeah, one. That's what yeah. I mean. It's a great song. Great songs on there, and I think yeah. it's a fantastic record. So that also probably influenced my giving him a slightly more edge on there. Uh, Tommy, I think he did some good stuff with those guys later on. I mean, especially on Monster, he was involved quite a bit with them. So, you know, I I, I think that he was decent uh, as far as songwriting goes. And I mean, really, apart from his guitar solos, Mark St. John didn't probably write really anything except he just wrote the solos yeah. that he played, and that's about it. So he had the lowest. Yeah. So, so hold on a second here. Um, so <laughs> you, put, you put Ace below Bruce and Tommy and Vinny. Um, I just, I just, I just can't believe Ace is a six um, on your list. I think it should have been a little bit, at least even, um, just on the basic fact that he of the classics that he wrote. I mean the classic memorable song how many i do agree that bk3 great album boosted great work on carnival um but you know how memorable is that to a lot of aces stuff that he did back you know in the day but i I don't know you have i mean it's also it's also personal choice too right i understand i mean like i'm like let's let's put it this way too i mean I, I, I love BK3 stuff, but like I said, I don't like Ace's solo stuff. So that kind of tinted it for me a bit that is, as well, right? And I'm, I don't get me wrong, I love Parasite, I love Strange Ways, and I love all those songs yeah. too. But I mean, don't forget too, I'm a big Asylum fan. I'm a big mm-hmm. fan of the Bruce era of Kiss too. So for me, those songs that he was involved with will still kind of have, you know, precedence on top of the fact that he did some great songs on Carnival of Souls with Just Gene that. and those guys. And also did a great solo record. So just yeah. that one album, BK3, is the big thing for you. But yeah, it, that, it, it, it's it only one number. Uh, Ace Freely's 78 solo album. Well, well believe it or not. <laughs> you know? Of... <laughs> no, well, yeah. believe it or not. Because, I mean, for, for me, honestly, I still think overall I would like overall. Bruce better as a player, right? right? So. Okay. I think Bruce is great. I gave him an eight, but I, I would also pay, uh, put him a bit below Ace. But it's all subjective. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 all subjective, and uh, yeah, I I went with Vinny. 
tops uh, gave him nine, yeah. you know, and then descended from there. And then Ace, because he wrote those classics, I didn't really even think about his solo stuff there. That, uh, that comes more into some of my, my later rankings. And then Bruce um, next, because of, for the same reasons as Mark, his era means a, a lot to me, but I, I, I won't try and have it uh, outweigh the classics and the value of those. And then Tommy just because he's only really done two and a half albums with the band. Um, and I gave Mark one just because he didn't write with the band. Yeah. So it wasn't, uh, there was no spite in my low marks for Mark. Uh, let's move on into work ethic and originality. Um, work ethic, you know, Ace is lazy. But I gave him five for that, middle of the road. And that five was completely earned in the last decade by his work ethic now, rather than his laziness when he was a star in Kiss or his solo career when he relied on other material coming in. He earned all five of those points in the past decade for churning out album after album after album consistently. Um, and, and then, you know, Bruce has uh, and Tommy again were tied for me for both being strong team players with a, a strong work ethic doing whatever is necessary um, Vinny gets a three uh, again he doesn't seem to have a work ethic overall you know he's he's done some things but um, some of the questionable things he's done make him appear very negative to me in terms of that work ethic and then, of course, Mark, I just gave him four. It's kind of a gratuitous. He showed up, he did the work for one album and then kind of disappeared. Daniel. I mean, Vinny almost wrote every thong, song on, not every thong, every song. <laughs> every <laughs> song. That's on, the on, like, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> on Lick It Up. So, of course, he had good work ethics. I mean, once again, his his score is tainted by the last few decades but I, I actually gave him an eight because he did in a short period of time he did a lot for kiss uh maybe too much but what i think is interesting about work ethic is it's pretty clear what paul and gene was looking for when you look at the scores we've we've given the players here uh work ethics i also gave 10 to bruce and 10 to tommy because that was what kiss wanted after having you know Ace and Vinny, unreliable. They needed some reliability in the band, some someone to lean on, someone they knew was going to be there and help them out at the back of um, being being there every every time they needed them. So, Amen. so it's it's clear that Bruce and Tommy are very similar in the scores going through the list, and uh, Ace and Vinny is well. To some extent, pretty similar. So, so it's 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 very clear that they needed a songwriter and a flashy guy when they hired Vinny. And then after Vinny and Mark, they s said to hell with this. We just need a team player that that uh, does whatever we tell tell them. And, and I think it's pretty clear when when you look at the scores. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, when when I looked at work ethic, you know, I, I thought about. A lot of factors, not just songwriting. I thought about things like, you know, ap appearing for concerts and showing up and stuff like that. So I mean, that's why Ace ranked so low. I mean, when you read those stories about, you know, him missing flights for rehearsals, he missed this and that, and he didn't show up for this. I mean, I ranked him low. I gave him a two on work ethic. I mean, the guy sometimes thinks it, it almost seemed like he didn't even want to be there half the time, you know. So he ranked low that to me uh, being a guy who was in a band and at, at one time a band leader in my own band i never stood for that kind of stuff in my band either if you're late for shit like that that's it man you're gonna get the rear the boot in the rear end and that's the end of it you know so you know that that's yeah yeah i think so, i think it's uh, pretty, pretty clear that mark is has been in bands he's a bit more sensitive about about some of the stuff <laughs> than the rest of us it's pretty yeah. clear yeah yeah it's true <laughs> Uh, well, again, but I gave just like Daniel, I gave you know Bruce and Tommy a ten because, I mean, whatever they they were told to do, they did. I mean, Tommy took care of doing like the the expos and stuff like that. The years when he was he was assistant and helper throughout the year, the guys' work ethic is fantastic. You know, yeah. So I I think that they deserve tens. I mean. <laughs> I mean, he tribute what he needed to be in there, 
you know, so uh, and did what he had to do. And, you know, Mark, I think I just gave him a one. That's it. All right, Ken. Okay, well, we know Mark's an ace hater on this one. So anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> the work ethic. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I'm thinking about this again. Um, I pretty much took their strongest, you know, when I was ranking this, though, I was thinking of their best, more of their years. best eras of years, right? So that's how I got a lot of my scores. So uh, though, having said that, um, work ethic, uh, I have uh, Bruce at the top, you know, always there, does, you know, what he needs to do. Um, and, and you know, is is solid, dependable, um, and and Tommy too. He's right up there with Bruce at the top for me. Um, and then next comes Vinny. I fit, now this is during the time period of when he was with the band, and he did what he needed to do, and he did a good job. Um, and and uh, the even Mark, I gave Mark actually an eight because uh, you know what. He did what he needed to do. He, he did what he could. He, and they dragged him he, around he, everywhere. They put him in a taxi right. from one studio to the next yeah. and bounced him yeah. back and forth he, like a ping pong whatever. ball and then erased yeah. all his work and said it wasn't good enough. Do it again. Exactly. So, and he did it again. Uh, he, you know, Paul told him what to do, what solos to play, how to play him, um, that sort of thing. So that's why I gave him a you know, good story. And I, I put yeah, Ace down just, just a little bit below that. Um, not really low, but one step below, just because, yeah, he he didn't he didn't feel he needed the practice. He even says that today. I don't need the practice. I never you know never need the practice. Um, and then yeah, showing up late, but he did. I, as far as I know, he made all the concerts in the seventies. Um, and didn't miss any shows, as far as I know. But um, so you know, he, it's close. It's close for everybody. It's you know, he's just slightly behind. Yep, even skip court in '77 to make it to a show. See, that's work ethic, you know. Yeah, that's commitment. <laughs> Actually, no, they they just wrote a letter into the judge saying, "Sorry, Mr. Frelly's going to be on tour for that appearance. Can we send someone else?" Uh, yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, I. What was it? I gave Bruce and Tommy nines, and my only notes on that were I would have given them ten, but they're not Gene Simmons who seems to only have two okay. modes, work ethic and sleep uh, on occasion. So right. uh, m let's move on. Let's combine originality and showmanship um, so we can crank through those two. Um, Daniel. Well, the highest scores uh, for me was uh, were aces. I gave him a nine in originality, mostly because, uh, again, his influence... Uh, low uh, loads of uh, of guitar players to this day people talk about how they were influenced by by ace and you never really hear that about any of the other guitarists not to the same extent at least so i gave him a nine there even though his playing is is not very spectacular when you look at it from a technical point of view but uh, somehow he managed to to create thousands and thousands of guitar players. And actually, I like the way he uh, moves on stage as well. Mm, as Mark said, he, he ha doesn't have that many moves, but they look real, they look honest. The only thing I don't like is the crap move he does, when you know he tilts his legs like this, and he jumps it's up and down. It, it looks like he's trying to, you know, <laughs> <coughs> you know what? Enunciate. I, I, I never, yeah, yeah, it doesn't look good. But other than that, he's uh, great on stage. And I actually gave Vinny pretty high scores as well in, in these categories. I think he was a riot on stage. As Mark also mentioned, he ran around and played his heart out and maybe too much at times. But those were the two two that stood out for me. Ken? Okay, this is originality and showmanship, right? Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Take okay, your, take your high points sure. from each. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ace Showmanship, I gave him the highest on that. Um, the other guys kind of are pretty even after that. Um, the rest across the board. Um, and then originality, um, everybody's pretty even uh, as far as originality. 
in their own way, right? Um, except, you know, I, I rank Tommy a little bit lower because Me he's too. technically, you know, well, he's playing, he's playing a role. He's, let's be, let's he's be doing fair. the ace, the yeah. role, right, right. He does it great, you know, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it's, that's the only reason he's just a little bit lower. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, I think that we're seeing eye to eye on that. I mean, I put uh, Tommy as a five because of that. I mean, he's, it, there's nothing original really in what he's done. I gave Vinny the highest in originality because I think the stuff that he added to the band really helped them in uh, those time periods. Mm, uh, true. And, you know, Ace and Bruce, I think they contributed fantastically good stuff, like I said before. So I, I put them even on there and put Mark as a three because, like again, he doesn't have much to... You can't really do too much with Mark because there's not too much that he had, you know, to, to look back at. As far as the showmanship goes, again, I had them pretty close. I had Tommy, uh, Ace, and Bruce at eight. So I think they all do stuff well on stage that I, that I think is good. I mean, Ace does what he does well. I think what Bruce does, he does well on stage. And I think that uh, what Tommy does, he he's done really well too. I mean, he's gotten into his role very well. I gave Vinny the highest right mark on that because I still think that he's the one who I remember the most running all over the place. And he still he had those damn heels that he wore on stage too. So that's pretty impressive. You can run around with those damn shoes on and do all that shit too. You know, he ever so, he even has those heels in his off time. Yeah, well there you go. I See, so <laughs> maybe he was so used to wearing it, it, it was it was no effort at all then. So, yeah. uh, but no, he doesn't know, have feet. Uh, he just has those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then showmanship for Mark St. John was a one because I mean, like I said, we only had what two shows with him. So, you know, you, how can you really rank him on that? So, but yeah, I, I still give the the high mark to Vinny, but you know, the other guys didn't do badly. Yeah, I think, that's, I think the, the thing you can say about Mark is have a look at the Heavens on Fire with video and you see that he can't be much more than a five. I mean, that guitar is just way up here like a ukulele. Looks, <laughs> look good. It's like 1960s and then he had the audacity to windmill on stage in front of Paul. So, uh, yeah, he didn't, he didn't get very good marks for showmanship from me as a result of that cardinal sin. But, you know, for originality, I gave Ace top marks because he's the Ace. Eight and eight, you know, for showmanship. I mean, yeah, he's only got two or two or three moves on stage. You know, shake guitar, wring the neck, lean back or fall over. I mean, or, you yeah, know, teeter. Yeah. You know, th those, those are Ace's uh -huh. moves. But, again, that showmanship comes across as him um, yeah. playing his guitar yeah. and singing the songs. Yeah. So, you know, he, he does get... A, Tommy gets two points less than Ace just because, again, he's playing the role. I think he's come much more into that role and started to make it more his yeah. own in yeah. recent years. But for the first few years, he was, uh, you know, um, an an analog pretty much like he'd been he was like the tribute band ace yeah. that he had played exactly. but he's become tommy you know more mm -hmm. in wearing the makeup throughout the years so i think he's much more original now much more commanding he has a stage presence and he does go around stage he's pointing he's looking at people in the audience he's he's far improved originality Vinny took you know won the prize on across all the guitars he is the most original of the kiss guitarists um mark you know was middle of the road in terms of originality because he was only there because he fit the bill so he wasn't very original he was there because paul wanted him to execute something in that style so mm -hmm. um again very middle for bruce you know originality i gave him a seven you know, he's original, but he's not spectacularly so. I don't think he's going to have influenced, uh, you know, a cattle car full of guitarists. But I think there will be a lot of guitarists out there that when they study the style of other players, they say, you know, I'd like to be like Bruce, you know, in, in terms of being able to play a variety of different styles from Don Johnson to Michael Bolton to Steve, uh, Spectre, uh, Ronnie Spector, you know, and to run the gamut of styles, execute it all well without necessarily being highly original, but having those little flashes of originality like Revenge, where he can really dial something in. So um, uh, Showmanship, he's a six, you know, probably equal to Tommy, uh, Tommy at his best. And Bruce at his best because he only had that one real period where he was uh, a showman on stage, and that was 92 to 95, the Revenger. That was when he 
owned that spot on stage. All right, let's uh, combine up chops and dependability. Daniel. Yeah, Bruce, get, he, he gets 20 points from me here, 10 points uh, when it comes to chops and 10 points when it comes to dependability, uh, while Ace only scored nine points here because this is maybe two of his weaker skill sets. Uh, I also gave a 10 to Vinny when it comes to chops because I, I think he can play anything. And if you hear some of his early stuff, he really can play some melodic, fine, uh, you know, um, more more sensitive stuff. And he can, of course, shred. Uh, uh, to dependability, Tommy, of course, gets a 10 as well. So uh, it's getting close here. I have a close race between some of the, the guitarists. I'm, I'm not sure uh, I'm satisfied with the results, but uh, we'll soon see who's <laughs> the winner, who the winner is. <coughs> Ken? Yeah, so uh, we're on chops and dependability, right? Yeah. <laughs> I yep. keep losing, losing track. <laughs> Uh, so many categories. Uh, so chops, um, I gave uh, it to. Uh, well, it I, I tied it across the board for chops. For actually, I gave Mark a nine because I you know he was a very talented gar guitar player. Um, you know, he's a and he's a, he was teaching guitar uh, for all that matter. Um, but, but we don't know how. I really don't know. I just based it on on that that you know he was supposed to be one of the best out there and that's why they got him um and then you know Vinny and bruce are, were both technically great great technical guitar players could do a lot of different things obviously um and with ace so i had ace ace and tommy just you know step below below that dependability um it's pretty much around the same uh, bruce dependable tommy always dependable up there, um, and I gave. I can't see my list. <laughs> uh, uh, and then below that, Ace. Yeah, of course, he's a little bit less dependable. Obviously, you know, skipping out on you know Destroyer and stuff like that. You know, play play cards or whatever. Um, and then and then Vinny. A little. I had him as a little bit less dependable. Nice, Mark. Yeah, well, I mean, I have some uh, very similar things and one very, very, very different one. Um, I gave uh, Bruce Kulik a 9 on the old chops. I think that he's fantastic. The guy can play everything. And he he's, he did it really well on stage. He's, he is still my favorite lead guitar player from Kiss, period. Dependability, the guy's a 10. If there was an 11, I would have given him 11. I mean, he's that dependable. Uh, I think Vinnie Vincent... <clears throat> He chop wise, he's very good as well. I mean, uh, his style is maybe not to my liking all the time. He's a little too much shred, maybe not enough feel sometimes, but I still gave him an eight. Uh, dependability, I gave him a five. <clears throat> we already know why. We don't have to go through that again. Um, I gave six to Mark St. John. Uh, technically, I think he's good. Uh, I don't think we've heard enough of him to know how good he is in other situations like blues stuff or something a little bit more uh, non shreddish, right? So who knows how he is that way. Um, I gave him uh, I gave him a one on dependability mainly again because I don't know I mean he what there's nothing to base him on that's why I always ranked everything so low on him I mean I can't give him a high mark if he doesn't do anything right uh, I gave Tommy uh, an eight on chops I think he's similar to Bruce but I still like Bruce better as a guitar player over Tommy and I gave him a 10 on dependability and the big thing I'm sure that everybody's going to go, oh, Mark, fuck Mark, uh, is <laughs> for Ace, I gave Ace a six on chops. The man is basically a pentatonic blues player. Uh, and in the, it, that's all he is. I mean, there's nothing else in his playing. And I'm sure in the solo period, he did get uh, some whammy bars affixed to his Les Paul and did do that. So he did modernize his playing a little bit. So I gave him a six for that. Uh, dependability, I gave him a two because, like I said before, the man is not dependable in my eyes. Just imagine if he discovered the Ebo before Paul. <laughs> comment. Comment. <laughs> please, the, Kent. The, please do comment. On the chops. Uh, so, yeah, you, you gave him less on the chops. Um, I I don't know about that. I mean, Tommy is you know. I think of chops as technical. 
Okay, okay, technical. All right, mm -hmm. all right. It doesn't matter. That's why I said we're missing in a category in here as, uh, you know, solo. I see the chops as being able to write, also write a great solo to fit a that's song. That's more songwriting, I think. Yeah, no, maybe. no, 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 that's, that's no, no. I think that's a completely different thing to songwriting. I mean, songwriting is the song overall, and it may comprise Sometimes the solo, the but solo I think... Is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if we were to do that, it would need to be framed in a different question, uh, because we're like the put, memorable solos. Well, I mean, this spreadsheet looks like the freaking Matrix. There's a lot of uh, elements in it, you know. So we're, we're trying to compress an awful lot of data or data into uh, um, an yeah. hour and ten minute show. What so I want, what I want to do is play with this sheet and block. I want to play a block out so I can block out some of the scores on there. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, Chops and dependability. I gave a seven on Chops because he basically, his bag of tricks was the same going in as it is today. He hasn't added a tremendous uh, amount of new technique or skill to his uh, wheelhouse. He does what he does extremely well, and he but he's speaking with a very limited musical vocabulary. So uh, from that perspective, he, he's a seven, which is, you know, it's not an insult. His dependability, you know, he actually came... Uh, you know, it, it should be the same as work ethic, dependability. The score should be identical. But, f you know, I, I think he's, he's much more dependable these days. And again, it goes back to the, the last decade mm -hmm. and interviewing him bang on time or being at events and he's bang on time in recent years. So I think he's much more dependable. Um, in, in terms of chops, you know, Vinny by far has the most chops. Um, but again, dependability was a, a, a tie between Tommy and uh, well, Bruce. 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 Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Whereas <laughs> chop wise, Bruce blows Tommy away. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I know Tommy has a good body of work outside of Kiss prior to uh, Harlow. Shake the Faith. Yeah. If you've not listened to Shake the Faith, go and listen. Go and listen to that fantastic album. You want to hear Tommy Thayer play the freaking guitar? Forget Black and Blue, except for the first album. Um, listen to Shake the Faith. Really, really good album. And I hope Tommy does do some solo work so we can um, judge it better. Um, and then Mark, I gave sevens. You know, he was dependable. He was there. Uh, his chops, you know, they were perfectly fine. I don't think he was better than Vinny. And I'm going more by Vinny's work across the spectrum uh, of everything that he wrote for his chops. So there we go. Last, last, and then we'll wrap up with uh, the overall scores and uh, give our thoughts on those. Vocals. Uh, Ken, <laughs> start with you for this. Oh, okay. Uh, vocals. Um, I gave... Um, Ace and and Tommy equal vocals as uh, sevens on mine. Um, with then then Bruce and uh, Vinny as a, unfortunately I don't think we heard Vinny enough. It would have been nice to hear it. It, it probably would have gone up um, as as a number for him. But uh, yeah, Bruce and Vinny a six, and then Mark. I just put a one. I I don't know if I ever heard him sing, uh, unless he did any background. But maybe he did. I don't know if he even did background vocals on Animalize or not. To tell you the truth, um, he may have, but uh, you know I haven't really heard him sing. Yeah, Mark, how about you? <laughs> well, um, I gave Ace the highest mark on vocals because I, I actually don't mind his voice. Uh, this is where I don't, is, I don't I think back. that's really a compliment. I don't actually <laughs> mind his voice. <laughs> well, I mean, he's, he's not, you know, Jeff Tate or somebody, you know, but I, I think that for what he writes, I think it suits his music. You know what I mean? I think it, it, it works well with it. And, and, you know, I, I think that for the kiss material too, that he did it, it's, it's perfectly fine. And I think it was good to have that different voice, in there, you know, the not only just, you know, to have something different, you had, you had a Paul voice, you had a Gene voice, you had Peter, and you had his voice. So it was, you know, different flavors for different people. So I think that that was fine. So I, I put him high on there. I put Vinny a uh, seven on on vocals because I don't I don't really know much of his material vocally outside of Kiss. 
you know, I don't own any of these like treasure records or these other things or whatever uh, that that he did before. But I know he did sing some stuff. I heard some demos like he did lick it up and stuff like that. And seven's not a bad ranking. I didn't give him like a two or something, you know. Uh, but you know, I and Tommy, I put seven mainly just based on what I've heard him do as far as vocals with Kiss. So he's he's no worse than anybody else that I've heard sing. He's a decent singer, you know? And uh, Bruce, I mean, Bruce is not known to, for his singing. I gave him a five, right? So Very middle kind. of the road. I mean, what, what we heard really is I walk alone and that's not exactly, you know, <laughs> anything fantastic. And mm-hmm. uh, and Mark St. John, I didn't hear anything. So I, I gave him a one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, we, there we go. All right, Daniel. Well, to me, there are two guys that stand out. I mean, Ace and Tommy sing. They sing all right. And then you have Bruce, who can't sing at all, I think. I gave him a three. I think you guys were way too kind to him. But I guess it goes with the territory, you know. He's such a nice guy. Uh, you like him. I like him as well. So you, you give him a few extra points. Uh, I think he, he's got a few too many points in some of the scores today. But whatever i gave him a three uh, and the other one that stood out is of course vinnie vincent he's an awesome singer just listen to some of his uh, um, early material warrior and also if you put on some some of the bootleg concerts from the lick it up tour and listen to the backup vocals it's it has never sounded that good again i mean when he really screams lick it up during the chorus it sounds awesome you have to go and listen to some of that stuff he's such a great what do you call it backup singer mm-hmm. and uh, i i i just at times i dream of him staying at one or two more years and being given a song on animal eyes instead of murder and high heels but maybe Ken would like to, that one to stay on, but yeah. the rest of them might. He could have helped <laughs> tweak the tweak the song. Yeah, a bit. but but given could have been a double album. Yeah, <laughs> but 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 if he, he would have been given the chance, the opportunity to sing one or two songs on Animal Eyes, it could have been such a great album. But he's a he's a great singer, I think. Nine. Which, yes, I agree, and that that was my ranking for Vinny nine fantastic singer uh his demos his you know work with treasure those two pop hits and he could sing and he had a soulful voice and he still had that great voice in 2018 you know in atlanta so i love Vinny's voice i wish he'd do uh, just a full album of well i i don't wish he'd do anything because he's not going to do anything so forget about it ace ace has a, a quirky voice much like i like getty lee i like ace frelly so you know okay i take offense to that but... well both can be an acquired taste <laughs> you know i've i've heard getty compared to being a screaming cat in heat you know so um you know i've heard unkind things about Temple getty syrinx, but I, but i do actually like him tommy's a six now tommy's a six uh middle of the road you know what he does i'd, I'd like to hear more um, and see if he's actually a singer or whether he's just mastered singing, you know, the few songs that he does. Um, Bruce, I think he's okay. I, I mean, he's certainly not fantastic, and I prefer when he has guest singers or gets John Karabi. Um, right. You know, right. Right. And Mark, we just have nothing to go by. All right, so Mark gets the participation medal for this episode because there's just really not enough for him to even be, you know, competing against the big boys so um, let let us do our our overall rankings of who is the greatest kiss <laughs> guitarist according to daniel's measures of uh perception in fifth place on 197 combined points mark no surprise there in fourth place wow on 320 points Vinny. That's going to cause an uproar. Um, in the third place, on 343 combined points, Tommy Thayer. Which means it's between the two. And it, it's not even clear. It was very close between Tommy oh, yeah. and Ace. Ace only got one more point 
and Tommy, <laughs> which <laughs> really shows yeah. that three of the four of us became fans in the mid 1980s, I guess, because Bruce walks mm. away with this. But Lonnie's sitting there applauding while drinking his beer on 357 points. This panel for these metrics decided that Bruce was the the uh, the greatest Kiss guitarist. Ken, thoughts on that? Yeah, well, like I said, I mean that's fine. I don't agree with some of the some of the counts uh, of some of the other voters, um, but uh, on my end, I think it was perfect because Ace and Bruce both got the matching score of ninety. Uh, and they equally fit their their periods of time, um, just the same way as uh, in, in second place was Vinny and Tommy were equal to uh, if their scores are eighty six. Um, and I could see how some of the votes may have swayed because some some people got into the Kiss game uh, later than I did, um, you know, versus where you come into starting to like the band and so that may be an influence one way or the other one other thing we learned in this episode is besides besides uh bob ezrin being hated mark also hates ace freely so that's, that's, <laughs> he doesn't like lazy guys i think i think that's what doesn't like called. lazy guys as a lazy band, band members. members and, and i think he members. probably had that he now doesn't like me for taking getty lee's name in vain either <laughs> <No>. so <laughs> Yeah. We're just adding to his little list. <laughs> just joking. All right, Mark. I, I know, I know. All right, oh, Mark. Not, have I, have I, your I, comeback on this. What do you think oh, of this I, overall? I, I'm, not, I'm not taking it seriously. I mean, I, I understand that this is a this is all in fun, right? And uh, you know, but I mean, look, let's face it. I've always said it since the very first day when I came on the podcast when we did that Dress to Kill episode, episode 33, I think it was. Uh, I've always said that Bruce Kulick was my favorite Kiss guitar player. And it shows here. I mean, he got a 93 on my overall. Uh, the next highest was Tommy at 89. Then Ace was 76. Vinny was a 78. And, you know, a t Mark was a 33. So, obviously, I leaned very highly on Bruce because I just think overall he a reliable kiss guitar player and a guitar player I'd love to have in my band hands down it's going to be Bruce Kulik every time all right Daniel yeah this is, this is all your like... all your idea so did it end how you thought it would <laughs> no it didn't uh it didn't my own list didn't even end the way I thought it was was going to, <laughs> to, to do so it was all a lot there were a lot of surprises uh however I just have to add that uh I'd also like Bruce in my band. I'd like him to play mm. in the studio, but I don't think he's like the Kiss guitarist. I think, um, in from my point of view, you guys gave him a f bit too many points when it comes to humor, vocals, showmanship, star power. Uh, on my list, he actually ended up in fourth place. I wouldn't, I would put him behind Ace if I just could you know, pick my favorite guitarist, but he ended up in fourth place. And I had Ace uh, in first place on 89 points. And actually Vinny in second on uh, with 87 points. I don't think Julian had Vinny in second place. No, I'd just like to state that the uh, results of this survey do not reflect the <laughs> <laughs> opinions of the station or its yeah. participants. Um, it did not end how I thought it was going to. I, I'm really a, a little bit upset that it's so close between Ace and Tommy because that's just going to trigger people, that it was one point difference um, where one is the originator with a large body of solo work and the mm. other is the Padawan, the, the, the understudy, the underling, uh, to a certain extent, Bruce walking away with it like that as well, clearly makes me rethink that I was too nice to him with vocals, but it really wouldn't have made enough difference. Um, 
Yeah, Bruce is my Kiss guitarist. I will never not say that. He was the guitarist in the band when I became a fan. So it, it probably skews my opinion of him as well. And just the, the overall way in which he's held himself over all these years has set him apart from the other ones to me. And that show, clearly showed in my voting. And as did my interactions with Vinny. I mean, I, I feel a bit bad for being so harsh on him, but I was in that mood when I did it. And it was like, you know, if I'd had a pin doll with a bunch of pins, I would have been sticking them into the Vin Vin pin doll. So, uh, Vinny, I'm sorry. Uh, Mark, again, he, he really shouldn't even be included in a lot of these discussions because there's so little with, with which to judge him. So out there we will post the full spreadsheet so you can take us uh -oh. to task for every single point that mark mark that guy's mark um you know that each one of us and i i bet if we discussed it further had more time to talk about it we probably would reevaluate some of our votes while discussing it because again each one of these guys raised points that made me reevaluate my decisions so i'm gonna go listen to oh What's it going to be? I'm going to go listen to All Systems Go. Good melodic Vinny. There you go. You know, put on my happy Vinny place. All right, let us know what you think. Let us, you know, approach those metrics yourself and uh, say who scored where for you. And also tell us how we were wrong or how we're awesomely right and we get it. All right, so for Mark, Ken, Daniel, myself, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.